Okay, here we go. My name is Versus Humanity, and this is Three Chicks, One Trick. Woo! Uh, this is our fourth and a half episode, as we've just decided. And we are here with our uh, current guest, the next one, the one that's here right now. Uh, yeah, I'm stoned. Kimber Haven. Uh, Kimber Haven is a transsexual porn star who was recently nominated for a TEA award. Um, she stands six foot eight in heels, and I cannot wait for this interview to commence. So I'm just going to go into it. Hi, Kimber. Hi. Hi. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm a little full because I just came back from dinner. Three, three girls, one prick. That sounds like a fun time right there. Right, right now we're at about yeah. Um, we only have one other chick right now in the room. Um, well, the damn chicks you, never show up. Uh, we have Shell Shell, our host, uh, the 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 brainchild of Three Chicks One Trick. Say what's up, Shell Shell. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm sorry, like we're negative two female hosts. They're pretty unreliable. I'm hitting them bitches up now. Hitting them with a paddle, that's what we do here. Anyway, um, so yeah, our other two hosts, uh, Guardian Angel and Jim from Rhinesick, will be here <coughs> whenever the fuck they decide to show up. But I don't care because I want to do all the talking because I have so many questions for you, Kimber. Uh, so I awesome. hope you came prepared. Um, the first one is, uh, you, you were nominated for a TEA award. Um, I think it's cool because it says T and you're a T girl. What is a TEA award, and how did the store, How did you come about being nominated for it? Well, it's the Transgender Erotica Awards. It's basically a transsexual award show that celebrates the uh, movers and shakers in the transsexual porn industry, and it's an award show uh, and a celebration just for the transsexual niche of the porn industry. It's actually my eighth nomination this year, but the other nominations I received weren't uh, trans award specific. This is the only award show that's very transsexual award specific. Awesome. And how long have you been in the adult industry? Well, uh, depends on what type of uh, industry in the adult world. I've been camming, uh, adult camming for about four years now. I've been <laughs> in the hardcore porn industry about two years. Okay, and when you say hardcore porn industry versus camming, what what would you define as hardcore porn industry? Because hold on, a couple guests, the Ninja hey. Stars and Shauna Lene, humanity, are, they all shut up, cam now. humanity, shut time. up, yeah, shut up, hey, Ninja humanity, Stars. We're, we're buddies. Hey. Well, see, I don't want to tell you to shut Ninja up, Kimber. Stars. You're the guest. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hey, Kimber, can you What's get a little here? closer to your phone because you're not quite loud enough? But I don't want to turn you guys up because I have to turn you up collectively. And if I do that, humanity is going to be way too fucking loud. <laughs> I'm very loud. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, uh, so yeah, if you could speak up just a little bit for us, Kimber. Um, my next question for you is, sorry, I just got lost. Yeah, um, when you say camming versus like being full-blown in the adult industry, how would you define full-blown in the adult industry? Because as I said, um, our previous guests on this show, which we haven't had many, um, have been uh, uh, full-time full -time cam people. Well, I mean, camming, uh, when you're camming, you're basically, well, music starts a little bit different because there are a couple acts, but when you're a solo cam artist, you're basically just getting on cam and being an exhibitionist and playing with yourself uh, as guys watch. But in the hardcore film industry, you're actually making movies about, um, you know, hardcore fucking. You're, you're fucking on film. You're having hardcore sex and you're producing a product that sells to a wide audience. Okay, so you can be found on like DVDs in your local porn shop, right? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but you know, DVDs are, I can be, but DVDs for the most part are kind of like newspapers. They're being phased out as an older medium. Nobody goes to the porn shop and buys DVDs anymore. Everybody consumes their porn online. <laughs> I, I can understand that because uh, the last time I bought a DVD in a porn shop, I worked in a porn shop. So I can I can see how that would be the case. Um, so you've been in the adult industry for two to four years. Um, uh, how how long have you been um, living as a woman? 
uh, for five years now. Okay, word. And, um, uh, awesome. Um, so, uh, uh, when I was working in a porn, when, when I was working in the porn shop, um, I noticed that the transsexual porn, uh, sold a lot more than, um, anything else in our store. Are there, uh, specific numbers that you know about of the ratios to, like, how much, uh, your genre sells to another genre? Yeah, well, there's been several studies, and a lot of them claim that transsexual porn is 400 times more popular than standard vanilla, you know, guy on girl porn. We're not the most searched category. The most searched category is teen, um, but, you know, transsexual is within the top 10 of the most popular genres of uh, consumed porn online. Awesome. And in your videos, uh, do you have any, like, specialties outside of the uh, transsexual genre? Uh, do you dabble in BDSM or do you, you know, do foot fetish stuff or anything like that? I've never done a foot fetish video yet. Um, a lot of my fans have wanted one. I've never been really big into feet, so I never really got it. So it's never something that... Because I've produced my own films for the most part. I've done studio shoots, but I own my own production company. <coughs> so I produce a lot of my own films. Uh, and I usually produce stuff that I actually enjoy, that I understand, that I get into. And I know there's a huge market for feet. I've just never... I, I guess I don't get it. I don't really get it either. Um, you know who would get it is the co-host on the Freaky Fucked Up Fear Hour on No Fucks Given Radio, Mr. Elmo Montgomery. Shout out to him. Huge foot fetishist, and he will explain it to anybody if you ever want to get it, but I still don't get it, so don't ask him. Anyway, um, yeah, the Ohio weed, it, it sneaks up on you. So I apologize for the comments I said uh, <laughs> earlier off air when I said Ohio weed sucks. Ohio weed is pretty good because I... <laughs> Shout there. out to Ohio. Uh, so, um, you've been uh, uh, you've been living as a woman for five years. So it's not just an on-screen thing that you do. You do live as a transsexual woman, like every day. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't have a male mode. I don't dress up like a woman because you know I have I have big fucking double D tits. It's not like I can take them off. Um, I live this way full time, and what you see in my pictures or on my films, what I look like. Uh, daily, except with a lot less makeup, because you gotta you gotta glam it up for the porn. Okay, word. Um, so, uh, crap, I have that next question on the tip of my tongue. Uh, oh yeah. So, um, you know, when people think transsexual porn, they think uh, chicks with dicks. Is there a market out there for after operation transsexual pornography? Like, is that a thing, or is it all strictly chicks with dicks? Well, see, the thing is that girls, there have been some very popular transsexual porn stars that had SRS, sexual reassignment surgery, and removed it, and their career was basically over. The thing is, if a guy um, wants to see transsexual porn, if he wants to watch female porn, he wants to see a girl with tits and a dick. That's what he's looking for. So... Uh, a girl that gets the operation done is kind of like out of that niche market and that's where she fits. So there, there's a small group of guys that want to see, you know, out of curiosity, what she looks like, and, you know, and all that stuff. But for the most part, the consumers of transsexual porn want the girl's junk intact. They want the sheenest, they want the lady meat. <laughs> Okay, so uh, my next question, when I was in uh, media school, I never thought I'd ask this, but you have a dick, right? Oh, I have an enormously huge dick, yeah. Okay, because um, it says on your little dossier that you're six foot eight in heels. Yeah, I'm a giant. I used to be a heavyweight cage fighter. Yeah. Goodness. So, yeah. how big is your dick? Uh, I'm about nine and, and very thick. Nice. The biggest dick that we've interviewed on um, Three Chicks, One Frick so far belongs to a woman. That's awesome. <laughs> well, you know, it used to be a lot bigger before hormones, so it shrinks from hormones, so nine is what I have left. But I, I'm oh, nine, goodness. So if I, yeah, if I had a, like a six-inch dick, as big as I am, it would look microscopic on me, so 
it looks fairly normal on me, but I'm just a giant, so. I feel that I'm six foot four myself, so I know what it's like to live the giant life. With a big um, dick. So how did you get into the adult industry? You know, you said you've been in it for four years and you've been living for a woman as five years. What was that uh, that uh, that other year like? You know, that year of transition and then you find porn at the end of it. You know, how, well, how did that go? Yeah. The reason why it was such a short time between my transition and getting into porn is because it all happened out of sheer boredom. I retired from a very good career. I was a bodyguard for many famous celebrities, and I was a heavyweight cage fighter, and I had retired at the age of 40 and had done well for myself. And I was seen at home, and I didn't need to work, and I was bored out of my mind. So I started camming, and I did a cam show that caught on. And uh, it got really, really popular. And then I was discovered by another porn star named Wendy Williams, who asked me if I was ever interested in doing films. So I said, sure, I'm bored. It sounds like fun. Let's do it. Okay, so this isn't the same Wendy Williams that was like a talk show host in the 90s or early 2000s, right? No, it's a transsexual uh, porn star named Wendy Williams. She's actually... She's won more awards in the transsexual porn industry than any other actor ever, and she's even an AVN Hall of Famer up there with Ron Jeremy. That's cool. Um, so, as as a transsexual performer, do you find yourself more um, accepted by the LGBT community as a whole, or alienated from them both in just everyday life and in porn? Like, what, what's your relationship to all the rest of the, the, the gay people? <laughs> well... <laughs> for lack of a better word. Yeah, all the rest of the gay people. Um, yeah, all, 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 all them. How, how do they feel about you? <laughs> well, you know, the, there's the transgender people that are, you know, they're the activists. They're trying to spread the word of tolerance and everything. They think transsexual porn stars give them a bad name because we represent the stereotype of... You know that all trannies are female porn sluts, so they they yeah. don't like the stereotypes they think we embody. So they're not fond of us. And you know, they're, they're, I I'm not a big fan of activists anyway. I like what they're doing, but they can be very Nazi-ish and they can they can go overboard. I mean, it's gotten to the point where you don't know what to call a transsexual anymore. They change the wording every day, and they use terms like cisgender and all this confusing shit and it gets to a point where people are afraid to talk to us because they're afraid of offending us by not getting the you know the correct verbiage and uh then you know you don't have a dialogue with people they avoid you because they don't know what to call you because they've been told to call you ten thousand different things that makes you know this God okay, damn it. So Wait. With, with that like kind of oh. understanding about Humanity. how society works, because I Wait. do agree with you coming from the Denver comedy scene, there were a couple of transgender activists that was just like, you know, it's like I'm trying, but the homework is ridiculous, you know, and it's yeah. uh, so uh, um Well no wait, uh, hey, hold on, humanity. I gotta say real quick, yeah. I just gotta chime in. I think that happens though, not just with transgenders, it's happened with so many things throughout like especially I'd say within the past twenty years, people are like, Oh, we oh yeah, race, religion, and everything. And I, exactly yeah, like this it, PC it goes, culture yeah. has just gotten yeah. way it's just gone out of hand. So, um, you know, you're you know, you're six foot eight in heels. If you if you walk into a grocery store and, you know, the little old lady checker is checking you out and says, you know, thank you, sir, for your business, you don't like reach across the counter and slap her. Oh, like, yeah, how I do you handle giving, that situation? I, I love giving old ladies the beat down. Of course I don't smack her. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I yank her across the counter. I just beat her old fucking, you know, wrinkly ass. That's a great yeah. visual image. But how do, how do you handle that situation when somebody refers to you as a sir or a he, but they're still trying to be polite about it? You know, it, it, it takes... People need exposure, and I, I, I live in a small town in Kentucky, of all places. And these people have never been exposed to transgender people, and most people haven't. You don't run into it at Walmart. So there's a growing pain phase where people are trying to learn how to interact with something they've never been exposed to. 
So I have a lot of patience for people. Um, usually if it's in passing, I won't correct them or anything. If it's somebody that I'm hanging out with, I'll politely say, you know, uh, you know, I'm presenting as a female, I live as a female, I would prefer to be uh, referred to as her. Now, you know, I, I'm a transsexual, I'm not a girl, I'm not a boy. If I took a blood test, I even show up as female. I'm not really a boy anymore. I'm not really a girl. I never will be a girl. I'm, I'm transsexual. So when you guys ask me, what do you think you are? I think I'm a transsexual. I don't think I'm a woman. I think I'm a transsexual, even though that I prefer to be spoken to as a female pronoun because that's how I present myself. Absolutely. I, I think that was the greatest answer I've ever gotten to that question. Um, so... Um, when, you know, my, my favorite weird question to ask all the porn stars I get to interview is, um, have you ever had an issue with a uh, fan being too much of a fan, you know, like trying to get your home address and, you know, basically become a stalker? Have you ever had that situation happen? Many, many times uh, I did have, uh, no matter how careful you are in porn, there's the risk of the person that gets infatuated. They watch your sex tape and they think that they have some sort of sexual connection with you, and you've been in their room, you've made them orgasm so many times that they develop weird feelings towards you sexually and believe you're meant to be together. I've had many stalkers. I, I had one guy that somehow he tracked down my home address, and he showed up at my front door. Um, but you get a lot of people in porn to make you feel extremely uncomfortable. And you have to be polite and as nice as you can because they're your fan base. But there's been porn stars that have been, you know, murdered from fans that were extremely stalkerish and have become a sad. Just, just, you know, any, any profession where you put yourself in the public view and you're considered some form of celebrity to somebody, that's going to happen. It's a risk. If you don't want to take the risk, don't put yourself out there. And do you mind sharing any, you know, the guy came to your front door and then what happened? Did you, like, you fight him or did you sign an autograph <laughs> or did the cops come? Or No, I actually, um, I was running an errand and my wife of 20 years answered the door. Um, and she's always packing heat. This is Kentucky. We own an arsenal of fucking weapons. So she's always <laughs> packing heat. So she's like, can I help you? And he's like, yeah, it's Kimber here. And she's like, no, uh, can I ask who's asking? And he's like, uh, never mind. And he just got in and left. We never saw him again, but it was a weird fucking thing. Because nobody in this neighborhood that we live in would know me as Kimber. That is, you know, that is not the name That's we would know me yeah. Exactly. So you have, you've had a wife of 20 years. So you were you were yeah. married to this woman as a man for 15 years. As a big, huge, hulking, Brock Ness, Lesnar-looking he-man. <laughs> yeah. And you're still married. We are, and we're still very much in love. I get butterflies in my stomach every time she kisses me. Well, I bet, because that had to probably have been a rough, you know, transition coming out. And y'all are still together, and y'all are still doing your thing that has to be like the strongest craziest bond i've ever heard of what what was her first reaction you know then to like now well we about you know when i when i came out and started transitioning about five years ago uh we hardly ever fight and we had a fight and it was really really bad and i thought it was going to be the end it was one of those fights where you pretty well think it's over and since yeah. it was going that direction, and I had been living this lie my entire life, including my life with her, I decided, you know, it's probably over at this point anyway. I might as well just have the gut and stop being a gutless shit and just tell her the truth. So I came out and told her uh, that I was transgender, that I feel like a woman inside, and that I've always been this way. And she was a little bit shocked in her expression, but then she reached over and she threw out my hand. And she said, if this is who you are and what you need to do to be happy, then we're going to do it together. Damn. That's dope. So, wow. That's, that's yeah, really interesting. Yeah, she's been with me every step of the way. 
and, and we're still very much in love. And I have a 21-year-old son who's a Marine, and he's very accepting and calls me Mom Dad. Mom Dad. <laughs> That's badass. Wow. So, you know, so how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I am 44 years old. Oh, nice. So you... You, you got to be a lucky person to get in the porn at 40 and then, you know, go pro in two years. That's pretty dope. Um, I was not expecting it at all. It was never my goal. I, I just did a few porn films because I was bored and it was fun. I never wanted to be famous. I never wanted to be a porn star to get all these nominations. It just kind of happened because fans reacted to the fact that my porn was very genuine. I was having a really good time because I was bored and I was having a blast doing it. That's so cool. My, uh, yeah, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, so your, your, your love life didn't fall out of deck at all. That's good to hear. My, uh, that nephew just recently came out as a transsexual. So, um, you know, my sister and my parents are like, what do we do? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so awesome. Um, yeah. Hey, Shell Shell. Yeah. Where'd Shell Shell go? What up? I'm here. I'm chilling back listening. Questions? Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to know about is, um, I mean, we've talked, you've talked about the stalkers a little bit. I'm sure there's like other issues you deal with being transgender. Like recently with United Airlines, I saw there was some issue. Just what are some, some of the tough parts? And if you could talk about the United Airlines thing as well. Yeah, there was a, a big thing that exploded about United Airlines with me, and uh, it, it became a huge ordeal on Twitter about it. I had flown to New Jersey to attend Exotica as a guest, and they had flown me in there and got me a nice room. And when I originally flew down there United, it was the first time I had ever flown United, and normally fly Delta. My flight was delayed by two and a half hours, which was annoying, but it was no big deal. And then when I got there, I was coming back, coming back home. My flight was delayed by another two and a half hours on the way back. And that was really annoying because they had happened twice in a row now. But, I, you know, it's just annoying. First world problems kind of thing. After two and a half hours, though, after the delay, five minutes before I was supposed to board, they canceled my flight altogether. And they told me to go to customer service. And I was stranded in New Jersey. I was supposed to go home. So I went to customer service, and when I, I I had been in line for a while, and the guy in front of me walked up to the guy, and he was treated all nice and everything. Then it was my turn, and I walked up, and the guy had the most disgusted look on his face when he saw me, and was just extremely rude to me for no reason. And I, I told him, I said, my flight's been canceled, and I'm, you know, I need to get home, and he says, I'm sorry, there's there's no flight to Lexington, just where I was going. I said, okay, is there a flight tomorrow? There's no flight there, period. Oh, can you give me a Louisville or Cincinnati? I can arrange to get home. He's like, there's there is one flight to Louisville tomorrow morning. Do you want it? I said, yes, please. He said, but now I'm in New Jersey. I didn't make plans to stay, uh, you know, so where am I supposed to stay? He, and I kid you not, this United... Uh, airlines employee, customer service, looked at me and said, it's not my problem. And I was upset. I'm like, okay, um, can you give me, you know, a room for the night or something, United? He's like, no, United won't pay for that. I said, is there a manager or somebody I can call to verify that? So he gets mad and he gets up and storms off and he leaves me there for about 15 minutes. Then he comes back with a hotel voucher in his hand thrusted at me and said, here, this is all I can do for you. And I said, okay, is there any way I can like, That's bag? all I wanted. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, mean, I my bag. I have no hygiene items. I have med medications I have to take daily from my bag. And he's like, no, they've been checked. There's nothing I can do about it. All I can do is rewrite it to your new flight. And the whole time he was just treating me like garbage, so I was very, very upset. Um, because I had just witnessed him talking to the guy in front of me, and he was nice and nice to him. And uh, as soon as I walked up, he gave me, it looked like I had just killed his mother when I walked up. It was horrible. So I, I don't like saying that somebody's transphobic or playing a transphobic card, because to me it's just acting the victim. But he definitely didn't like me from 
from the point I walked out. Um, and he was definitely a prick. So I told my publicist, and of course she raised hell, and that started a whole thing on Twitter. Oh, fun. Things on Twitter are always fun. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it got way, it got way, um, it got blown up to this big crusade against transphobia. You know, I'm not an activist. I don't want to be an activist. I don't want to be involved in those activism politics. So everything just went crazy. So back when you were a cage fighter, um, when, when did you stop doing it? When, when was that uh, out of your life? Um, the, the cage fighting was a hobby for me it's because I was raised uh, in martial arts I started training when I was five and I was always involved in some sort of fighting and I loved to fight and uh, when I was in my 30s I decided to you know try it out and it was a hobby just to prove you know if the fighting skills I had learned throughout my life really worked so it was a lot of fun for me I mean I was never pro I never did much of anything with it. I was mainly um, more secu private security for celebrities most of my life, and the cage fighting I did as a fun hobby. Oh, let's talk about the private security for celebrities. What kind of celebrities are you private security for? That's dope. Uh, I provided um, executive protection for Uncle Cracker, B.O.B., Gym Class Heroes, Jason Derulo, <laughs> Jason Mraz, Jason Brantley, um, Terry Boulder, a.k.a. Hulk Hogan, um, let's see, who else, um, so many of them. Do you um, have any cool they, stories from protecting them that you'd like to share? Well, being a bodyguard is not near as glamorous as, uh, you know, you see in the movies where Whitney Houston <laughs> is singing to you. It's not like that at all. Basically, you're... You're, the majority of what you do is standing outside the celebrity's hotel room door and you play doorman and you have an earpiece and when they need you, when, when they want to go somewhere, then you have to get ready and you have to tell the rest of the team that, you know, um, that they're leaving the building and then you all meet in a center location and you just keep people away from them. It's not that glamorous. It's basically what you see in these little news clips on TMZ or whatever. Basically, you being a dick to all their fans is what being a bodyguard really is. Uh, but oh, Harry, I'm, well, Hulk Hogan was the best guy I ever worked for. Uh, Darius Rucker, aka Hootie from Hootie and the Blowfish, was the worst. He was a complete dick. But, uh, really? He's the Eminem oh of country God. music, though. He, he is such a dick. Uh, Mark Slaughter from Slaughter is also a dick. But Hulk Hogan was an amazing guy. He was so good to his fans. That's awesome. I've heard I've heard good things about Hulk Hogan in, in other circles, so it's it's good to know that Hulk is a Hulk is a good guy. Um, so when did you when did you stop doing that? Uh, I retired. Well, I started transitioning when I was thirty nine. And about a year into my transition, I started developing breasts and hips and a bigger butt. And my eyebrows at that point were manicured. And it was starting to become very difficult for me to hide the changes. Because so many things about your body change, your yeah. skin changes, it becomes softer looking. And, and I, I was in a profession where I'm, I'm providing bodyguard services. So I didn't feel like um, I was going to be accepted as a bodyguard, a big macho bodyguard, and I transitioned as a female, and it started to get apparent. And by the time I was 40, I wanted to retire anyway. I had done really well for myself. So I just told my wife, I said, you know, I'm just going to retire and then just relax and enjoy my transition, my second stage in life. And then I got really bored because I was sitting at home not doing anything. So and that's when all the candy and the porn happened because I was sheer boredom. So do you ever have partners in your videos? Oh, all the time. Yeah. I, how, how did, how, how's your wife on that? Uh, we've been polyamorous for years upon years. Out uh, 20 years, we've probably been polyamorous for about 15 of them. And, um, oh, okay. So it wasn't a new thing yeah. anyway. 
We believe that you can love somebody without feeling the need to own them. And we believe in love without possession or jealousy. That's legit. I need to go shopping for wives wherever you went shopping for wives. <laughs> yeah, she's amazing. She's a really hot Hispanic girl with big titties. She's my angel. <laughs> you are a badass, aren't you? That's awesome. Um, so uh, when you did come out, did you, you know, any of the guys that you worked with or the uh, security community or the cage fighting community or, you know, the you know when you describe yourself as a macho, big macho man, like... How did the other macho men that you associated with take the uh, take the news? Only two guys I worked with uh, contacted me afterwards and figured it out and had seen me, recognized me, and they both contacted me and they both wanted to fuck me, which was very weird. They both wanted one to them, fuck you? <laughs> yeah, one of them was my assistant because I was the boss, and one of them was my direct assistant which was right under me, which I worked with every day, and we were good friends, and then he wanted to fuck me, and I'm like, this is kind of weird, because guys that I used to hang out with, go have beers with, are now hitting me up, saying, hey, they know, and they want to fuck. I mean, it was weird. That wasn't the answer I was expecting at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how would you feel if, you know, you were, you, you were working with a guy, and then... You know, he hits you on Facebook. He's like, "Hey, you're hot. We fuck." What? Yeah, that'd be weird. That'd be really weird. It'd probably be factor though. I know that. That'd, that'd, that'd be weird. Uh, anyway. Uh, wait, wait. Did you just say it'd probably be factor? <laughs> I was waiting for you to catch that. <laughs> you fucking asshole. Like, I'll think about it. Get back. I'm to gonna you. fuck him up. You were really slow on that. No, motherfucker. I was doing shit, you hear me? God damn it. I gotta fucking run the production of your goddamn show, you asshole. And then you bring my name. They're like, this is supposed to be my day to fuck off. Don't make me fucking put you in a box again. You haven't been. I'll get chuckles on this motherfucker and we'll box you the bad way. And I got a fucking feeling Kimber could throw in some terrible shit to help right along. I need to move it to where my pop filter's in front of me. Because I'm popping real goddamn hard. I stopped popping when I put my pop filter in front of me. Because I was like, see, so you do it right you, here, though. It's are like, you, are pop. you saying that if I became a woman, you wouldn't find me pretty factor? I mean, I mean dude, I'm I love good. my wife. Like, I, I mean, like, I'm good. He, he could look all right. I don't know. I'm hurt. I don't like. Yeah, you mainly, never know. I don't, I I don't like fucking Rock look at you and think. Know. I wonder what he'd look like as a woman. <laughs> I don't know. I already look like a giant six foot eight bitch anyway, so okay, it's no big deal. Um, I think when I look at anyway, violent, back like, to why, it. This is why okay, I don't so do we this covered, show. Um, you know, we covered your wife, and we covered your work, and we covered uh, what you do in retirement. Um, and he really uh, wants to cover you. Say what? <laughs> He's over here being a perv. Don't be a dick, because humanity was too. Hey, Fuck that. I, I've got another question. <laughs> I've got another question. So, so, ask a question. <laughs> I, I want to know what we brought up your wife, and when I was watching some of the radio shows you guys do together. How long have you guys been doing that? Um, we just. Um, last night we completed our 28th show and we do it weekly um, the totally inappropriate radio show and I have my wife which is our production manager which handles all of our technical stuff and makes the show run um, who's on the show with us and my girlfriend uh, which is another transsexual porn star is on the uh, the show with us and my girlfriend and wife are best friends so Oh, so, listening to an episode. Not only are you a transsexual with a hotter wife than everybody else, she has a sister wife too. Well, yeah, hey, I just got to say real quick, yeah. Kimber, we were listening to an so, episode. I shave a lot. Sorry, we were listening. You shave to an a episode. lot? Is that what you just said? Hey. No, I, I share the love. You know, oh, you I, should, I, should I thought you say, said I shave a lot. I'm like, there, whatever. I don't there's imagine. a delay on this. Second, <laughs> no, second no. to a second and a half. Actually, everybody, no, that's why I'm coming in late. And you fuckers ain't hearing me. I don't know why y'all shave a lot. I assume you do humanity, but that's a different point. Like I said, though, I we took a listen to one of your episodes. I like, I, like, I enjoyed the show. That shit was fucking entertaining. Mm-hmm. 
Like sincerely. <laughs> I was I was fucking amused, so hell yeah. And I fucking and we do goddamn fucking like twenty fucking shows over here, so yeah, props, I'm, Kimmer. I'm totally gonna listen to it at oh, work. Thank you. Yeah, that that's awesome. my new work time yeah, show. Get on there and talk about the shit that happens to us in everyday life and our fucked up lives. That's awesome. So when you're uh, when you're not doing your professional thing, like you know, you're not doing the cage fighting thing. Like, what's your hobby as of today that you like to just go out and do for fun? That's not adult industry. That you you know, do you fish? Do well, you hunt? Do you, you you have an armory? I've, you know. Yeah, I, I work between ten and twelve hours a day, six to seven days a week. I'm a cam model. I'm a porn producer, so I'm producing films in my own studio. I'm starring in porn films. I'm doing a radio show. I do stand-up comedy. Uh, I do so many things that I'm always working. I'm always doing something. So I never have time for any hobby. You do stand-up comedy? You do that like yeah, on the K- Kentucky-Cincinnati circuit? or? Yeah, I do Louisville. Because I just moved yeah. to Cincinnati. I'm thinking about getting back into the into the scene as well. Yeah, I did the um, uh, the caravan in Louisville. Uh, yeah, if you go on YouTube and just type in Kimberhaven Stand Up, one of my little stand up routines will pop up on YouTube. That That's shit awesome. is funny. Uh, hey, are you familiar with a stand up comedian named uh, Jordan Oliva? Just passed away a couple years ago. Nope, never heard of him. Uh, she's uh, the first uh, transsexual person I ever met, honestly. That's the, the only... So, yeah, she was on the stand-up comedy scene, and we worked uh, extensively together in uh, Denver. Well, Colorado. shit. So much for me being the first. Well, shit. Oh, oh yeah, no. You should you should definitely look into her. Um, you're probably funnier than her. Uh, she and I didn't get along that well, but we worked together for a long time, and, you know, she was, uh, she was an influence on many. When she died, the... Uh, Westward did an article on her and everything like that, but uh, yeah, no, you uh, you definitely. Um, so, how long have you been doing stand up? Like, is that a new thing, an old thing? It's uh, originally I was because my cam show that I've been doing for so many years that got me discovered in porn was very different than other cam shows. I would get on my cam show, I would tell jokes, be funny, do celebrity impressions dance, as well as play with myself in the section. So it was kind of like a variety show. So I was, yeah. being, I was being watched by this one guy, and he's like, you are hilarious. Um, I think you should do comedy. And I thanked him. He said, uh, let me have your email, because I'm going to set you up with uh, a stand-up gig, and I want you to show up and do it. And I thought it was full of shit, so I sent my email, and sure enough, he hooked me up with a gig in Louisville. Um, at the time, it was called the Laughing Derby, and uh, he sent me the info, and the manager wanted me to do a five-minute set, so I was a little bit worried because I had never done stand-up, so I had to write a bunch of original material for my life, and hope I, you know, it's Kentucky, so I was expecting to get up on stage, be hated, and be heckled because I'm in Kentucky, a right-wing conservative state, and I'm a seven-foot-tall tranny. So I basically yeah. did the Eminem eight mile thing. I'm like, you know, I'm expecting them to fucking heckle me. So I'm gonna get up on this stage. My entire routine is going to be making fun of my own ass. So that way, by the time I'm done with my set, they don't have nothing to say. So my entire set was, uh, and I, I did it on the great mic off. They had an 18 person contest to see who was the best. And I made it into the top three on my first night of ever doing it. That's crazy. That's a good start in stand-up. Uh, that shit, that kind of shit doesn't happen in Denver. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So, uh, um, so are you on the open mic scene at all? Like, do you do you devote a lot of time to it, or do you just get shows here and there? Or, um, you know, uh, have you ever gone out of state with it? Like, uh, are you planning on taking the comedy thing anywhere other than just a hobby, or are you are you um, is it becoming lucrative at this point? No, it's, it's always been something I did for fun whenever I had downtime, which I hardly ever have. So whenever I have downtime, I'm on the road traveling, meeting fans, going to award shows. I'll hit up uh, the manager of the carnival and I'll say, hey, you mind if I stop by and do a set? 
and you'll say, yeah, come on down and do a set, and they'll give me the day and the time. Uh, but normally it's something I do occasionally when I have time, which isn't very often. I just do it because I love doing it. Yeah. I love making We're, people laugh. So, um, you know, you just said you're a, a six foot eight tranny. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been told that word is very offensive if you call it to a transsexual person. How did that word become the derogatory term? You know, because okay. to a lot of people, it just seems like an abbreviation. How would you explain this to, to you know, somebody who has no education on it? Okay, the, the, way it, the way it can be explained is tranny is short for transsexual. Why, if you abbreviate it, does it become offensive? The same concept for homosexual and homo. You call somebody homosexual, it's different than calling somebody a homo. And that's the same thing with tranny. You shorten it, but when you shorten it, you, be, you turn it into a slur, like you do with homo and homosexual. I can see that. It's a good explanation. So I mean, if you tell somebody uh, uh, you're a homosexual, um, you know, my friend Terry here is a homosexual, it would be a lot different than if you introduced Terry and said, my friend Terry here is a homo. Yeah, that, that is a lot different. Um, so, you know, going about daily life, going to the grocery store, going to, you know, the gym, whatever you do, uh, what are what are the struggles, you know, that you run into, like, on a daily basis that um, not everybody would think about? You know what I mean? Like... Uh, no, really. I mean, for the most part, people leave me the hell alone. Uh, there's a lot of good old boys here, but they don't fuck with me because I'm a big bitch. So, I mean, they're thinking to themselves, I'm not going to fuck with this tranny because if I beat her up, then it's a hate crime. If she kicks my ass, I will never live that shit down. I got my ass stomped by a giant tranny. <laughs> giant, for the most part, don't love me. Uh, women are more understanding about the whole trans thing. Guys are very uncomfortable around it for the most part. I've always used the women's bathroom as I was transitioning. I never really had an issue. I went, uh, I went on a road trip up to Miami. I stopped in Georgia and I had one slight issue in the bathroom where the janitor told me I was in the wrong bathroom and I flipped him off and used it anyway. But you know, <laughs> I've never, never really had any problems. But women, for the most part, are very accepting. It's men with the male ego thing that gets them a little bit threatened because here's, you know, a chick walking by him with gigantic tits, but they can't look at that girl because if they look at that girl, that girl has dick and then it's gay, and then their whole fucking ego gets fucked up in their head. That's hilarious. Um, so you said, you know, you uh, with the United Airlines thing, you got stuck in uh, New, New Jersey and you were up there for Exotica. Um, what all conventions do you frequent, and when you're there, what, is, what are some of your favorite things to do? Who do you like to network with? You know what I mean? Um, um, uh, well, I go to Fetish Con. Yeah, I go, go to Fetish Con, which is held in St. Pete, which is by far the most fun. It's wild. If you've never gone to Fetish Con, you need to, like, broadcast live from Fetish Con. It's, it's insane. People are doing all sorts of crazy shit at Fetish Con. I go to the ABNs every year, which is the Oscars of porn. I occasionally go to an X-Biz, Expo, and I went to Exotica. But for the most part, what I like to do when I'm there is fuck. Um, so, you know, but I'm not signing autographs or, you know, taking pictures with fans. Uh, there's a lot of people there that I want to fuck. So I, I take care of my fuck it list and I uh, get, <laughs> get my dick wet. So, yeah. And is this with other porn stars? Like, do you guys go network and just show up to, you know, fuck? Like... Yeah, pretty much. Sometimes it's on film, sometimes it's not. But, you know, you get a bunch of fucking horny porn stars in one area, and, you know, you both find each other attractive, and it's time to go back to the room and fuck it out. Hey, I what are, see what are some of the things that you see in public, like, at these, at these conventions that you wouldn't see in everyday life? Like, how risque can it get before it has to move into private when you're, like, on the convention floor? 
most of these conventions don't allow a lot of physical contact between the porn star and the fan. Uh, you have to wear pasties. You're not allowed to show bare nipple. So I have to wear pasties lying on the uh, expo floor. And I have to cover up my sheen of course. Um, so you're not allowed to be, yeah. You're not allowed to be totally nude. And you're not allowed to have, I mean, you like put your arm around some guy to take a photo with a fan, but you can't like, you know, do inappropriate touching. So, yeah. Right, real quick, Kimber, I got to ask though, on that note, <clears throat> um, like I said, we were listening to your radio show, and I don't remember the name of the gentleman you were referring to, um, but he said that he was like, um, you know, uh, uh, fucking, I, I feel like I'm really popular, I get to fuck all these girls, and you're like, no, there's only just like five guys in the porn industry that'll work with us. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. There, there's, I mean, if you have, if you're filming with no name, because a lot of my fans will hit me up, and they'll, um, they'll say I want to be with you if they're really hot I'll say well then do a video with me and if they're game then we'll do a video but most of the main male stars in the transgender industry there's about five of them and we all swap them back and forth so they're getting all sorts of play so imagine being a guy and you're into transsexuals and you're a porn star and you get to fuck every hot transsexual porn star in the business because you're one of the few guys that actually works with them Gay guys, gay guys will not work with transsexuals, one, because they're not attracted to them, because you have to be straight to be attracted to a transsexual, because you have to be attracted to femininity and girls. So they won't work with us. And then, of course, guys who do straight porn won't work with us, because they think it'll damage their career, because they'll be seen as gay. So there's a very small selection of guys that'll actually work with us. So you can, we can, no fucks given radio can send you referrals, right? Is that what you're saying? We, uh, if <laughs> oh, we have a guest yeah. that we think. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, we need to find one host that's not me or Factor to, to do this. I think we might have one. I've got one in mind. I'm not going to say it, but yeah. No, we're going to send you a referral. Um, because I'm we want we wanna, to we wanna cross promote as much as possible. Um, uh, so yeah. Uh, um, wait. So wait. You, uh, no, I'm, I'm gonna become. I'm gonna become like a porn radio broker. Podcast, no, radio Paul. Show. Um, do you ever have guests? Hey, from? shut the fuck up. Hold on. <laughs> now, I didn't because say it was just, you. And I mean, I don't care, dude. Whatever. That's just gravy. I'm just confused. You say one. I'm not gonna say, but I'm trying to think. Like, you mean a host from NFGR? Now, are you saying one of the hosts of this show? No, one of the hosts on the station. You said not be your factor. That's that's those are the and I heard that. So like I'm just yeah because you're not sounding offended. I know you heard it. I'm like I don't care. I'm just like I'm fucking like I like I'm like man. I'm I must really not know my host that well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do some homework. Yeah. That's, anyway, like, whatever, so man. Referrals. Fuck you. Um, so there's a, there's you know, a lot really of hosts. Hey, but I think I know who you're talking about. If you're uh, if you're I, I think I know, yeah. transsexuals. Uh, it, attractive that's awesome um so uh um do you have like anybody that you work with in the industry that like you're a mentor to or looks up to you or that you got into the industry or you know you 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 ran across when they first got into the industry or anything like that well the closest thing to that would be my girlfriend raven Ross, because she wasn't into porn when i met her and she hadn't been camming she had a very straight-laced um, job, and I got her into the whole world of porn and stripping on stage, because I'm also a stripper, and I got her involved in that, and she ran with it, so I gave her pointers along the way, and now she's a porn star in her own life. Do you find that um, other 44-year-old women that are genetic women, um, you know, envy you or find themselves to be jealous of you because, you know, you're a successful porn star and you're a stripper and you're a stand-up comedian and you're a 44-year-old woman that wasn't even originally a woman? Do you ever get, like, that kind of hate or backlash? Yeah, damn, where are they going to be jealous of? I'm a seven-foot-tall tranny and they're not? I mean, do they really want to <laughs> I, I mean... Paul is always good, I, I guess. 
<laughs> I've never, I've never uh, met a woman that's like, damn, look at that seven foot tall tranny. I wish I could be a seven foot tall tranny. Well, hey. I mean, you know, the guys are looking at you, not them. <laughs> look, all I, mean, I know. When you're working at the strip club, how many 44 year old women are there? You know. Hey, look, all I know is this: this has been. This has been a little fuck trip, man, and I'm enjoying it for real, ladies and gentlemen. But I think we need to just take a quick moment. So let's take another little trip. Yeah, by myself, the unknown factor. And we'll be right back. Three chicks, one prick. Said check check US. I'm right. The one that looks like that. All right. That's, yeah, that's right on the map. All right. Yeah, I'm good. All right. All right. Fire this tractor beam up right quick. All right. Got that. Tractor beam, I snatch you up with my probe. I fuck you up. Come over here, girl, let me get deep up in your guts. Spread them. Make you bigger on the inside. I'm a doctor and I got a TARDIS size surprise. Your wants and needs are not my concern. Just gotta spread my race, so take my sperm. They rip you apart as they reproduce. But still, bitch, you know you want my juice. So my juice? Take it. You hear me? We're gonna do the same shit all over again. Cause I know a bunch of me is gonna fucking spawn up. Then you get all pissed, start arguing. So you know what? Fuck it. Before you even fucking hatch, you little fucking cock smoking mother. Oh yeah, look, you a baby. I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. you hear me? I don't give a shit. Sick of these goddamn arguments. 
Fuck this planet. We're going somewhere else. You hear me? Fuck this whole galaxy. I intend to burn it all. I'll be the only one left. And then I'm gonna blow my own fucking head off. Cause fuck all this shit. Oh shit! What the fuck's going on? What the fuck is that? Up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. Ah shit, these goddamn aliens are trying to eat my broadcast again. So as they say in Canada... Tune in to Aliens Ate My Broadcast every third Tuesday. I mean, there must be some way... But fuck it. <laughs> yeah, we don't give a shit. We're full of shut up! We're doomed, dude, shut up! We just might get into some crazy shit. Conspiracy theory, anarchist, fucking antichrist. We better think of something. Yeah, that'd be even better. We better think of a way. Your host, Mr. DKB and myself, the unknown factor. You're both pieces of shit. Yeah. I can prove it mathematically. Try and catch Nessie with us, fuck. We might even find Bigfoot or some shit. Does evil exist? And if so, can one detect and measure it? Um... Rhetorical question, Morty. I'm just going off on rants. I love it. The answer's yes, you just have to be a genius. Numbers, man. It's all about fucking numbers. Everything adds up. Right here. I'm no fucks giving radio. God damn it, stop eating my broadcast. Peace out. Introduce this Fox show, Factory jackass. Is getting lackluster and creepy. Inter introduce this show, jackass. <laughs> What's up? I'm Versus Humanity, and we're back on Three Chicks, One Freak with our guest Kimber Haven and my co host Shell Shell. We don't know where the hell our other two co hosts are, but that's okay because we're here. Um, yeah, so uh, Kimber, how are you doing? Have you enjoyed the show? It's been an hour. Um, we only have a couple more questions for you, but the couple more questions, um, have, uh, they come with, uh, uh, I don't want to say instructions, I don't know, Factor is going to put you in a box, and there's some... Yo, there's some yo, she, yeah, 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 humanity, stop! Yeah. what I do? Yeah. Okay. What do you mean, what you do? That was like... I don't... That, Terrible. Like, like, because, here, here, I'll tell you what he did. Like, Kimber, you hear how he was doing it? Now let me fucking do it, right? Yeah. And only because this is three. <coughs> Sorry, had to clear my throat. Three chicks, one motherfucking prick. Yeah, we're gonna take it old school and make it nice, right? We're not gonna, we're not gonna do what you see on the no fuck, well, not see, but here, ladies and gentlemen, on the no fucks given hour. If you want to hear this, on such a terrible... Well, you can't watch me while we do this to people, but that's besides the point. Right. But if you want to fucking uh, see or fucking hear the terrible edition of this, you can go over to No Fucks Given Radio. You know, go to the fucking segment, click the box, and, like, there's a bunch of past ones. You can hear the good ones, the nice ones, but eh, since we're on this three shakes, one prick, it's supposed to, you know, love sex, right? We ain't trying to get all violent over here, right? Humanity called for it. I didn't know for it. I went violent because it's just in my nature. That's why I am the unknown factor, but that's besides the point. So, we can tune it down though right i tune it down whatever but that doesn't matter because i'm still gonna ship your ass off kimber yeah i got a box for you man it's a big ass box kimber what the fuck jesus christ you know how long it took to build this box i hate when i get one that's like like no see that's what sucks man like when i get one that's like over six foot <laughs> That's what's up. Like, dude, but I gotta ship myself and Chuckles and all of us on episode 200. It's gonna blow. I swear to God, this is a lot of boxes to build. But whatever. That's besides the point. I'm shipping you off yeah, out of this island. But this island, man, this island's plush. Yeah, it's nice. Got everything you pretty well need, right? You know, house, you know, all that good shit, right? But you alone, there ain't nobody there. No kind of entertainment either. I left you everything necessary to run it, like TVs, fucking VCR. A DVD, all that good shit, gaming systems, like retarded, right? I just didn't leave the entertainment, cause I'm kind of a dick, you know. But we'll let you make a couple selections. Yeah, humanity. What are you gonna give her first? Uh, you get to bring three movies with you of any choice to put in that DVD player, and you have to watch these three movies for the rest of your life. It's like on repeat. You don't get to. Stop. It's like, do I want to watch this one and then this one and then this one, or like? A and then A again, B, C, C again, B, A. How are you going to mix it up? Who cares? But there are the three movies you have to watch on repeat for the rest of your life, and that's the only television entertainment you get. What are your three favorite movies that you're going to, that you have no issue watching the rest of your life, and it's not going to feel like, you know, um, prisoner of war torture, you know? All uh right. -huh. 
right. Well, Evil Dead 2, Daniel Dawn, Army of Darkness. Nice. And yes. Goodness, that 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 is that is dark. You fit in well here. Factor, what's next? No, she. I don't give a fuck that he called. For you don't me. give a fuck. I said fuck. he. But why she did you doesn't like give a movie, fuck. Though? Don't say what's next. Do you hear movie? that? She said one There's movie. no fucks given she's, here. She's got That's two funny. more selections. Yeah, you can't go through well, the show. Yeah. So we play underground music here. You have your three. Uh, you have your three DVDs. But hey, you can bring humanity. Three albums with you too. Hey, what's ding up? dong. What's up? She said one movie, not three. Fight me. I said three. You. Well, do but it. she you only said one. Her. Dipshit. We need two more movie selections. Two more. Where are you at, Kimber? Where'd Factor go? <laughs> right fucking here. We like, he's out there losing it. She said, she "Hey, said Kimber, Zoolander, and Resident Evil, and Evil Dead." Oh, no, I didn't do that. Resident well, Evil, Army oh, of Darkness, and it. Evil Dead Two. Oh, so there we go. That. Oh, well, I did not. Well, you I lost you for some reason when you said that, Kimber. Yeah, my, we lost that. my bad. Here, babe, ask a question. Yeah. See, you was mad at me for doing my job right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Good manager. job, humanity. Good job. Okay. Thank well, you. I'm going to go with what uh, Versus was asking you when we thought the question hadn't been answered. What uh, three <laughs> albums, music selections would you take? God, I, I don't even. God, it sounds horrible, but I don't even own albums. I buy individual stuff. Um, well, let's say three songs and then the albums that go with those songs. We'll just throw in there for free. Uh, maybe uh, Motley Crue. Um, I love every anything by Motley Crue. It could be any of their fucking songs. Motley Crue rock. Ben Fields, the shit. <laughs> no, no, you gotta uh, pick one. ACDC. Oh, I gotta pick one song. No, a CD. Yeah. God, I don't own any CDs. Who owns fucking CDs anymore? I download individual music from the fucking internet because I'm in 2017. Man. It no. happens. No, no, Kimber, as a musician. You just kind of hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, no. it, it's the digital world. You know, I know you're a musician. So, you, so you don't fun. download a whole fucking album ever? It's okay. It's, no, it's <laughs> not, humanity. You can make Shut that up. match your genre. Because we're also going to give you three pornographic titles that you can bring with you. and But only three. Full-length movies, whatever. But the three that you could just watch on repeat, repeat, repeat. What are the actors? Where can you find them? Do you endorse them? Do you like them? What are those three movies or adult movies? Uh, seeing that, you know, we're musicians and we're just like, everybody listens to albums. We See, probably don't another, know the, 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 the porn that, discs we bring. So what would you bring? See, what would you download on the disc? The, the only uh, porn <laughs> movie, the full fledged movie that I love is called Morgan Bailey's Bad Day. But other than that, most people don't know what porn movies are called nowadays because they just watch individual scenes on fucking X Panther and Pornhub and shit. So they don't watch the whole movie. They just, besides, men typically watch only five minutes at a time, then it's clean at time. <laughs> yeah, that does happen. <laughs> Roasted. Roasted. Factor. I mean, it takes a man a month to get to a fucking full length porn movie because he's only watching five minutes at a fucking time. And then he gets that <laughs> when the bitches are talking. He's like, I don't want to hear that fucking bitch talk. It is really hard to keep her in this box. Oh. Uh, um, no, anyway, she's cool. Yeah, she's cool. Like 50 all right. That didn't so, whatever. Work. I mean, you, all I got to say is you're really limiting your shit, Kimber. I mean, you got, like, one movie, Led hey, Zeppelin. And like, oh, no, you got three movies, what? Led Zeppelin. I'm still on one movie, sorry. Do I have okay, a Motley Crue and ACDC. You got a little bit of music. I don't, and then just one porno movie. You do like, have lube, and what brand of lube do you have? It, it, 
Astro Glide. If I had Loop, I don't need any fucking DVDs or CDs. I don't need any music. I can just fucking jack it all fucking day, kill as much time as I want, find something on the island to shove up my ass. I'd be happy. I mean, I mean, you could totally find shit on the island to shove up your ass. We're gonna get to that last, though. So can you hold the fuck on and just play the goddamn game, Kimber? <laughs> fuck! I'm gonna put you in the... I'm about to ship your ass off to a different island. You got me? And you don't want that. As long as there's gonna be loot at the new island. Oh, no. The other... Whatever. Look, here's the deal, right? So, I assume you read some shit, right? You read books and shit, right? I'm a porn star. You think I read? Really? You don't read erotica? No, I, come on. I mean, well, Fifty not Shades of Grey. Do you game life? it all? I mean, I know it's a terrible book, but do you game it all, Kimber? Books, does that count? Yeah, goddamn yes, well it does. does. All right, so no, for your next doesn't. selection, right? I'll give you right? three total runs of three series of comics. What do you want? Um, what do I want? Um, I want Alpha Flight. Nice. That's interesting. <laughs> X-Men and Hell yeah. probably Thor. All right, no, wait, 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 wait. I, I can't just have you say X-Men. You have to specify a book. The Uncanny X-Men. I... I applaud your selections. I'd like to think Racer and DKB would be like, damn, that was, that was pretty good shit. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> yeah. yeah, for real. That's Super Nintendo, ladies and gentlemen. That's a different show. You know, we do comic book shit over there. That's besides the point, right? Man, you got one more for her? Yes. This island has just become overrun by zombies. They're everywhere. You didn't think this was going to happen. They're coming out of the water, and you have to fight them off. You go into a tool shed and you see just about everything that's in like the nicest mechanics tool shed. He's got big old <laughs> wrenches, he's got saws, there's a fucking chainsaw, he fucking hammers. What do you grab to fucking beat these zombies off? What tool? What anything that's not a gun or a knife or a blade or a, you know that you would just Well, I would find definitely in. get a long pike because a pike won't get stuck. It's in and out. You can keep range. You can keep the fucking zombie away from you, and that way avoid being bit. You don't need ammo. I mean, you can't get in close quarters with zombies because then you risk getting bit, and that's fucked up. So a long pipe, plus if you get it embedded in a zombie, you can hold them away from you with the pipe and keep that distance. But you have a horde, so I have to say the only thing... I think your, your selection was almost the perfect selection, but you needed a halibut. Well, he said they were coming out of the water. If they're climbing out of the water, the pike is the perfect selection because you can just do quick thrust as they bob out of the water. Because it has yeah. range, you can reach them. All the dead pirate zombies that have been in the ocean for know, hundreds just of giving years a romance, finally though. coming out to attack you. But you beat them, you've got your pike, and then you found some gasoline and you blew some shit up, and now they're all dead. And you're walking around the island and you find your favorite fruit tree. And you're like, okay, I'm going to relax, and your favorite fruit is on this tree. And you just grab that fruit and take a big old bite. What is the fruit you just took a big old bite of? Uh, well, you know, it, I'm a porn star, so of course I would love me a banana. Uh, nice. Yes. But here, I'm going to up it for you, right? This is the final question. Yeah, final question, Kimber. Final item, final thing you get on this island. Yeah, suddenly just a box appears, and you open it, and is in it is your favorite sex toy. Of all fucking time. That one you just like can't live without. What is it? My, my, uh, God, this sounds horrible. A 16 and a half inch fucking dildo. 16 and a half inch? How wide is that? It's, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good girth. It's got a suction cup. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Can't find that on an island. You gotta bring that with you, or have it shipped to you. Yes, you do. Have it shipped to you. I don't even think like 
you you would you would have to have like crafted that somehow like out of wood and i think that's just so dangerous it like that's the only thing cause, like so yeah so you got your 16 i like how you said 16 and a half inch dildo though i just got to point that As out if that half inch matters yeah well, yeah, for yeah. Real. i couldn't find it 17 they only go up to 16 and a half at the point where it's 16, I don't think the half inch matters, though. I really don't. Oh, no, no. That half inch. Oh, I love that half inch. Can you really take that whole thing? <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, seriously, like, dumbfounded right now. Like, is this a real um, thing? That we're... <laughs> it, it is real dildo. It is a real dildo. Well, I, I have a suction cup dildo. But I, I don't shove all of it in my ass. See, you just stick it to the floor, and then you just kind of kneel down, and you take it for a ride, and you can go as deep or as shallow as you want. you got plenty to work with. It's fine. Yeah, because I don't see, like, I don't think it'd be possible to take that whole thing, would it? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, it's possible. I mean, I, 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 mean, have I haven't you done it. Whole... I, okay, look, I <laughs> no, would just, the real uh, yeah. I would no, think that I, would cause yeah. internal issues. Like, seriously, at that side, like, that's a lot of fucking, just up, and like, I mean, seriously. She's six and a half feet tall, I mean. Well, Eve, okay. Well, that might, so but, I guess, I guess, at, at, like, maybe if you're six and a half feet tall, you could. But like, I, I know, like at five foot, there's no way in hell. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here rubbing right above my belly button. I'm, I'm six and a half feet tall. That's not gonna happen. Well, yeah, I've what... taken twelve inch dicks, and I mean, I've taken a lot of twelve inch dicks from men. And, and you know, what's an extra four inches, right? Internal um, fucking hemorrhage, ing. Yeah. <laughs> bleeding, death. Yeah, but it's the most fun hemorrhage you'll ever have. You got a point there. I am good. Yeah. <laughs> Word. I'm, I'm, well, I'm good. Do we have any more Fuck questions that. for a factor? Look, no. Fell. She's got her shit. She's got her films. You've got your ACDC and my fucking nice. and whatever. It's just a nice little island, you know. So you set up, yeah. But we're gonna fucking leave you there. Kimber, because we are a bunch of, well, I guess this is more me pulling a dick move. I'm just going to pull a dick move with all y'all's guests now. Sorry. He They're did send zombies in, though. There, right? What a dick, man. You sent zombies yes, in. you got your box. You got, okay, if you I got, got my dildo there, I'm happy. Go ahead and leave me. I'll, I'll, I'll just enjoy my dildo, my loop. Hey, and look, you can turn on some dope background music so you can keep to the beat. Or, you know, if you want to watch a fucking horror film and really kind of get, you know, poor graphic in that bitch. Yeah, man, because it gets freaky fucked up here over here. But that's besides the point, ladies and gentlemen. This is No Fuck Skipping Radio, and this has been Three Chicks, One Prick. But technically, it was it was one chick, two two pricks, and a... Well, no, technically, it was one chick... One shit. Well, and well, well. I mean, if you include my ass, though, it's three. So, technically, we flipped it this time as far as the amount there of pricks. There you go. That's the word we were looking for. What? A tranny. Well, no, tranny. because I wasn't even referring. Oh, well, you said you got a shivine. Okay. Well, I wasn't even trying to say that. I was just trying to say the amount of pricks as far as the amount of vaginas. I don't care though. It is true. It's fucking. It's one. I don't fucking know. This shit got confusing. Got these other goddamn hosts need to show the fuck up. On no fucks given radio. This is no. humanity. Go to my I don't give a shit. These other guests. No. Humanity. humanity. Do you have any website plugs, Twitter links, Facebook? No. Anything shut up, like real quick. Kimber? Kill him. Yeah, uh, Kimberhaven.com, where I do all my fucked up porn. Yeah, we like that. And then, of course, nofucksgivenradio.com. Uh, much love to my co-host and founder of the show, Shell Shell. We'll find our other host later. But thank you so much for being with us, Kimber. We really enjoyed having you, and we hope you had fun, too. This has been the fourth and a half installment of uh, Three Chicks, <laughs> One Trick. Eventually, the host number will match the name. But I've been here the whole time, and so is Shell Shell. So whatever. One chick, one prick. We got it. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Yeah, and wait, 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 which will... Yeah, just always, always, ladies and gentlemen. Remember my start, and everybody else's, because everybody's got a starting point. But this shit right here is Remember My Start by Versus Humanity. Have a good night. <laughs> If I can make it
to the top Do I ever see the bottom or stop? Hey, if I can make it to the top Do I ever see the bottom or stop? Hey, hey, if I can make it to the top Do I know that I'll remember my start? Hey, if I can make it to the top Do I ever see the bottom or stop? See the bottom or stop? I gotta keep myself focused I can't become a sheep Just going through the motions The notion of an average job to me just seems bogus I'd rather grab a bag of weed Flip a pee and smoke zips But there's a reason why I'm rapping that I don't get I gotta be done with the trapping for a purpose I'm nervous that my service to society Comes with great sacrifice, pain, and hella notoriety Hey! If I can make it to the top Do I ever see the bottom or stop? Hey! If I can make it to the top, do I ever see the bottom or stop? Hey, hey, if I can make it to the top, do I know that I'll remember my start? Hey, if I can make it to the top, do I ever see the bottom or stop? See the bottom or stop? Lord knows I'm climbing, Lord knows I'm climbing There's light on my horizon, there's light on my horizon I'm on a bull track with an old back on a young frame, would you know that? I have no other choice than to sit here and write some gold rap Get on my knees, rejoice when I succeed an unforeseen path If you hit on me, you and your boys expect some blowback I get no slack, just small black with a dead face Insomniac on the attack, a Jew entrepreneur Reaching for a bat, a Prozac like a Tic Tac I can throw back with a jack Glass and some cocaine in the powder for my six, six times an hour for anxiety attacks that morph my mind into a horror film for yet restored borders between chilling out of order will it get harder will it flow more as I turn the corner I'm only getting smarter I will make the pieces fall in order hey if I can make it to the top do I ever see the bottom or stop hey if I can make it to the top do I ever see the bottom or stop hey to the top, do I know that I'll remember my start? Hey, if I can make it to the top, do I ever see the bottom or stop? See the bottom or stop? Music's gotten better, and it's since I got sober. I know I fell because I overloaded my shoulders. I fall back on cocaine and jack, but as I got older, Jack didn't seem to have my back relationship over. No more Denver comedy, hated by the Roxy and shit with me and Gino Ski has gone a step beyond Rocky. Damn. Where the fuck are my day and once cause I've been here for nine years and only here from Jenica But it's all good though, I've grown a thicker skin for when I'm hit with a diss post A song in the head with a fence post, a bong, a lack of respect to my friendship so long I don't need you, I just need Kyle and Drew, Johnny Cody and the Army 1602 Probably rapping pirate gang and there ain't shit we can't do I'm shooting for the stars, what the fuck else can I prove, huh? If I can make it to the top, do I ever see the bottom or stop? Hey, if I can make it to the top, do I ever see the bottom or stop? Hey, hey, if I can make it to the top, do I know that I'll remember my start? Hey, if I can make it to the top, do I ever see the bottom or stop? See the bottom or stop? Toured around the world, y'all ain't paying attention. In Brussels, Luxembourg, Germany, and for Frenchmen, paid by Army Entertainment. Plan on going again when my background check gets cleared and I'm no longer a felon. I busted ass in Denver on a fake ID. I made the front page of the post of stand up comedy. I made history. But y'all didn't see me and AJ get it up the ass from Denver PD Nah, didn't ya? Hashman's still fighting for y'all You don't deserve it until you get off your ass and involved But you ain't gonna, it's just gonna fall on cave on And everybody's gonna party when we live how we want With no fucking gratitude toward the men and women who Made the sacrifices for you to be able to do what you do And if you paid the price for me to do what I do That shit ain't lost on me, I promise that is the truth Thank you if I can make it to the top, do I ever see the bottom or stop? Hey, if I can make it to the top, do I ever see the bottom or stop? Hey, hey, if I can make it to the top, do I know that I'll remember my start? Hey, if I can make it to the top, do I ever see the bottom or stop? See the bottom or stop?